Now to the Tony and Pulitzer Prize winning play about the futility of the American dream, Death of a Salesman. It's back on Broadway again for a limited run that's been hailed by critics and is anchored for the first time by a black Loman family. With us now the star of the hit Broadway revival of Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman, Wendell Pierce. All right, Wendell. So let you me know, ask you, how do you how do you how do you step up to the plate for a play that was written in 1949, still right. relevant today, won a Pulitzer Prize that year, considered one of the greatest plays of the 20th century. It's been revived five times. Like that's I, I would think that's a lot of pressure for anybody. Uh, talk, talk, talk about talk about. Yeah, I know you said you'd be crazy not to take this opportunity. Right. I know you're right. But talk about just do, do you feel the pressure uh, because of the weight of this extraordinary uh, uh, piece of work? Yes, I do. Uh, the, the pressure is there, but as they say, you know, uh, pressure makes diamonds. You know, it's uh, right. It's from it's from those moments that I step on the stage and I look out and I and I uh, realize that I'm stepping into an iconic role, an iconic play, and I'm I feel as if I'm at base camp of Mount Everest looking up and I know I have to summit <laughs> in the next couple of hours. Uh, but I think of two groups of men before I start to play. I think of the small fraternity of men who have played the role before from uh, over these 70 plus years. There's only been five men, uh, Lee J. Cobb, George C. Scott, Dustin Hoffman, Brian Dennehy, and Philip Seymour Hoffman. And wow. now I join that small fraternity. I also think of another group of men, which is Ozzie Davis, Earl Hyman, Roscoe Lee Brown, uh, James Earl Jones, men because of our cultural ignorance in America um, uh, never got an opportunity to play it. So I have an obligation to them to step up to the plate and do a great job. So to those two groups of men, I have an obligation, a sacred obligation to do the best that I can. Yeah, the, 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 you, those are uh, two extraordinary groups of men. I, I, I want to ask you, what what makes what makes a play written in 1949 still seem so relevant in 2022? What makes it relevant is, and what makes it a classic, is because it speaks to us across time, place, race, age. 70 years from now, it will still be speaking to our common humanity, something that we shared with those who have gone before us and will be after us, that it recognizes an authenticity and a truth that there's a cautionary tale that we have this great American aesthetic, but that we have this American paradox that we never live up to the aesthetic that we espouse. And that's the thing that Arthur Miller tapped into and gives us a great opportunity to relearn that lesson over and over and over. And that's the thing that makes it timely, timeless at the same time. Well, Wendell, always good to see you. Same here. I want to ask you two uh, a two-part question. One, I know that uh, there's a partnership with the play with Broadway for All, a nonprofit that's really helping to bring inclusiveness to Broadway. Mm -hmm. But secondly, I, I was moved when I read that you said when you were uh, wrestling with doing this part, that it was part self-reflection and that yeah. you wanted to know if the best was behind you. Right. Uh, Absolutely. You, you've been in it now since October 9th, I think, was yes. the opening. Uh, have you answered that question? Do you see that there's a lot more window left other than the wire and the other things you've done? Yeah, um, yeah. there has been a deep dive of self-reflection in this play. There's no man who can ever play the role of Willie Loman and not, uh, not be challenged by the psychological impact of it because ultimately this man is challenged to the point where he destroys himself uh, um, and he's on a self-destructive path. And so what you do is, in any role, you, you start to reflect on your connection to that role. And uh, you get to a point, as a middle-aged man, you start to say, oh, my best days behind me. Um, but with this uh, challenge and achievement, uh, I've come to the realization that my, des my best days are not behind me, that there are many more to come, hopefully. And uh, also, more importantly, I have fear, but now I have courage. Courage is acting in the face of fear, not the absence of it. 
So sometimes the challenges of, of, of a career, of a life, uh, may be fearful, but find the courage to face them. That's the blinders that Willie Loman has on, that his pursuit of this materialistic wealth, uh, he was blinded by the fact that he had a, a familial wealth, the love of family that, wasn't, uh, that was all around him that he couldn't see. And he was blinded by this uh, pursuit of some materialism. And so uh, I've learned that lesson. Yeah. So Willie Loman, of course, is an iconic of a character as they come. And for so many in the audience, you'll also always be identified with The Wire, your character there right, right. Bunk. Um, you also are, though, part of Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan's show, yes, uh, yes. which is entering its third season, I believe, third next month. Tell us a little bit about what we should expect there. Well, um, Jack Ryan is a great show. Uh, it's, uh, it's taken me all around the world. I've been living in Budapest for the past year and a half. Uh, I've worked in Vienna. I've worked uh, in uh, Prague, uh, Rome, uh, Athens. Uh, so the travelogue is wonderful. So uh, yeah. that's, always, that's always something that people love uh, about the series. But uh, it is it's, it's, um, intrigue and, and excitement. It's an action show, but the intrigue of it, the geopolitical things that are happening in the show. Um, we wrote this before everything that's happening in the world today, but uh, it reflects what's happening in the world today. And uh, while we thought it was something that was totally fictionalized to a higher level, sometimes you were surprised at how, um, uh, how the geopolitical world can actually manifest things that even a Hollywood writer couldn't even come up with. All right, Wendell Pierce, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Can't wait uh, for, for the season premiere on Friday. And thank you very uh, much. I'm taking Rev. Rev and I are, are going to be uh, coming to see Death of a Salesman. Very excited about that, too. Thank you so much for being thank with us. Thank you very and much. Thank you for having me.